Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is the Agile Methodology Explained. If you want to learn about the other methodologies, please stay tuned, I'll be making videos about those also. One of the most important decisions a team must make is what methodology will they follow for the release of the application. The methodology will dictate the flow and mindset of the team members from the conception of the idea to the final delivery of the product. Today's methodology is the Agile Model. This video will cover the key concepts, the stages of the Agile model, and the pros and cons of the Agile model. First, key concepts. The Agile model takes on an iterative approach to managing a team project. A large project is often broken down to smaller sprints and iterations throughout the software development lifecycle. The Agile model prioritizes short, frequent sprints and deliveries, which is a nice approach because it allows for customer feedback. Agile teams, because of their short cycles, are more equipped to take on different challenges and change the direction. So first, the four core values of Agile methodology. First, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Prioritize the people and the people behind the processes and the tools more than the processes and tools themselves. So this basically means focus on the people who are actually doing the work or are writing the code and things like that instead of the tools that they'll be using. If you have a good team, that can be very beneficial. Next, working software or a comprehensive documentation. Prioritize actually getting functional code out to customers. So often, a lot of teams focus on writing all this documentation and then they're weeks into a project and have no prototypes to show to a customer. So instead they're saying, focus on getting something working to show to a customer as a proof of concept instead of millions of pages of documentation. Next, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Prioritize building communication with your customer and continuous development. Often the relationship is they want to negotiate the prices, the deadlines, how many team members, instead of focusing on how we'll get the project done. Instead of working against our customers, work with them to the proper information and focus on just delivering a good product. All the little details will come in time. And finally, responding to change over following a plan. Prioritize the ability to change and meet new requirements as they come instead of just focusing on the original plan. So this is one of the keys with Agile. Agile can handle different priorities, different tasks. If something new comes up, you can change direction very fast. Make sure if you're using Agile, use it to its benefit. So let's say midway through the cycle, you need a complete change of direction. Be able to adapt and make the proper changes for your team to still be successful. So that was the four key values, now the 12 principles. One, the highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Two, the project team welcomes changing requirements, even late in development. Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Three, deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference on shorter time scales. Four, business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Five, the process builds projects around motivated individuals, giving their environment support they need and trust them to get the job done. Six, a face-to-face -face conversation is the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team. Seven, working software is the most important measure of progress. Eight, agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should maintain constant pace indefinitely. Nine, pay continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. 10. Simplicity is essential. This is the art of maximizing the amount of work done. 11. Self-organizing teams produce the best architects, requirements, and designs. 12. At regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective and adjust its behavior accordingly. This is often called retros. So now that we have the values and the principles, let's talk about the actual phases in the software development lifecycle for Agile methodology. For this, we will break it down to six phases. First, the concept. In the concept phase, the product owner determines the scope of the project. They will meet with the customer or client to determine the key requirements and features that will be part of this sprint. The beauty of the Agile model is all the requirements do not have to be determined beforehand. They can be determined later on in the sprint and added on to. This should be documented though, so it can be referred to later. Next, the inception phase. In the inception phase, the focus is on the team that's going to be developing and testing the product. 
The product owner communicates all the required information to the team. The team then starts the design process. Markups and possibly wireframes are used at this part of the iteration to give visualizations to what the product will look like. Next, the iteration phase. In the iteration phase, so most of the development is actually done. The developers finally turn designs into code. The goal is to get a working prototype to show the customers by the end of the sprint. In future iterations, this can be adjusted for functionality and look to meet new requirements. The faster a developer can show their work, the faster they can get feedback and make changes. Release. In the release phase, the QA or testing team must make sure that the code is bug free. That means there's no bugs or defects in the application. Any bugs or defects found should be communicated and addressed appropriately. You may have to decide, well, can we fix this bug later in the next sprint or is it something that has to be done right now? Next is maintenance. After the application is finally in production, the team then continues support for any new bugs that may be found. Often, because of edge cases, some bugs are found after in production and may have been missed in testing. That is okay, that happens to every application. The point of testing is to minimize the bugs, but you may not catch all of them. Any new bugs should be addressed and communicated to the team and they are prioritized for future sprints and releases. And now finally, the retirement phase. In the retirement phase, the product or feature is either obsolete or is being replaced by something else. Users will be migrated over to the new product if one is available. And now to wrap the video up, the pros and cons of the Agile methodology. As with anything else, nothing is perfect, but first let's go through the pros. The first and biggest pro is the flexibility. Agile methodology is very flexible when it comes to changes in requirements, environments, and even team members. Next, immediate feedback. Agile methodology occurs with continuous iterations and cycles, so you're continuously getting feedback from the product owners about how the application is coming along to change this or that, instead of how in other methodologies, you wait until the end of a whole cycle to say, hey, a month later that they don't like it, and I had to go through the whole cycle again to change everything. And the last main pro is less upfront work. Other more traditional methodologies require heavy documentation before anything can be started. In Agile, they care more about having a product than all the paperwork and technical stuff that comes at the end. And now the cons. Just how documentation was a pro about not having much in the beginning, that's also one of the cons. Focusing on development sometimes leads to a lack of documentation or outdated documentation because of continuous changes. The next con is a non stack scope. In other methodologies, when you declare a scope in the beginning of the project, that's going to be the same scope throughout the whole cycle. With Agile, the scope may change several times throughout the same cycle. You have to just adapt and then go towards the new scope. This may create constant demands and requirements for the team members. And the final con is product unpredictability. In the beginning, your end product might be a red rose, but because of all the iterations and changes and new scopes, the end product might be a blue basketball. And that wraps it up. I will be covering more methodologies on this channel. If you have any suggestions, please leave them below. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more videos like this, please click here. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.